Hey guys, welcome back to your channel, honey. So good to see you. Um, as you can tell by the title of this video, this is going to be a little bit different than our normal chit chat videos. Um, this was one of the videos that I had in our lineup of different types of videos. However, this one was way on down the line. <laughs> But because I've been getting so many emails, I've been reading your comments from this apartment as well as the last two. Pretty much the same question over and over and more so now that I'm in this apartment and I downsize. So initially it was, how do you get used to downsizing from a whole house, like a freestanding house, to a three-bedroom apartment, then I moved to another three-bedroom apartment, and now I'm in a two-bedroom apartment. So, because I think a lot of people, more so than you probably even think, are downsizing from larger spaces to smaller spaces. So, in this video, I just felt like I would share my tips. Now, this is not Bible by no means. This is just how I've done since I've been in the last three apartments that you guys have seen. So if this is helpful to you or somebody you know, share the video, whatever the case may be, so that it can kind of give them like a, a blueprint, so to speak, okay? So what I'm going to do is because you've seen the actual tour of the apartment, the empty, the furnished, which I will also link down in the description below in case you have not seen either of those videos. But in this video, I'm going to try and insert clips of what it is I'm talking about. So number one, yes, I downsized from a three-bedroom, two-bath, and a sun, an enclosed sunroom to a two-bedroom, two-full-bath patio, which was the main reason why I moved because I needed that patio and I was using, I had wasted space by having a third bedroom that really didn't get used. So, I moved into this apartment, and so a lot of you started flooding me with questions about when I purged, because you guys watched that happen, watched me get rid of a lot of decor. Um, you guys have watched me here recently buy a couple new things for the new place. Um, so let's just jump right into the video, okay? So these are just Sharon's little tips, or whatever the case may be. So, in any apartment, this can go for a small house. If you're in just a small space living, the goal of this video is to help you maximize that space to the best of your ability and make it, be it an apartment, a rental, whatever the case is, to make it feel like home. It's where you live. So, you want that I'm at home feeling regardless if you're renting it or not. Okay, so, what was I? So, okay, basically, again, so this is going to be just my little tips and tricks on how I maximized or how I made this and every other apartment that I've had home. Um, I will say this as a disclaimer. A lot of what I've done, which was simple changes here in this apartment, if you are an apartment liver or even a renter and you want to kind of change up a few things, I would say make sure that you check with your landlord to make sure everything that you want to change is not like a permanent change or it's not going to interfere with them re-renting the unit of such. And by that I mean I hung my own chandeliers here. I've painted every apartment that I've lived in thus far, my favorite two grays, and then this one only is one gray, actually. I've painted, which all was approved by the place that I live. They want you to feel like you're at home, that's your home, this is where you live, which is why they call them luxury apartment homes, okay? So, one of the first things that I've done in my space to make it mine was, number one, I painted the entire apartment, and I painted it ace or gray, but I've also used in the past repost grays, and, I, and I'll try and post those two colors 
on the screen if I can find the swatches for them. I'll try and put them right here. But I went with the darker of the two because they're my two favorite grays in the entire world. And they're by Sharon Williams. Okay. So that's one of the first things that I've done when I moved in here to make it mine and to make it feel homey. Because these colors literally make me feel really, really good and happy. And it's not like a sad gray or anything like that. Number two, like I said, was <clears throat> I changed out my own fixtures because I already had fixtures. So it wasn't really like I went out and bought these over-the-top fixtures for this particular rental. No, that's not what I've done. I actually had what well, I did, but I took them back because I actually had um, light fixtures in my house, which I still own. Um, and I just went and took them down and brought them over here. So I have shan't have a total of three chandeliers, soon to be four, okay? So changing out light fixtures, which could be very inexpensive, depending on where you shop for your light fixtures. Um, you can change those out. I'll try and remember to start a picture of one of the light fixtures here in this video as well. Um, also, when living in or downsizing to a smaller space, or it, this is a combination of smaller space living and maximi maximizing the space and this is also a combination of making your home your home where you feel like it's home and coming home to your home be it uh, it's a rental while you're in it is yours okay so one of the other things that i would suggest especially in small space living or just living in general if you don't like clutter that's the very first thing I tell anybody is to declutter because clutter in your home, having a lot of stuff everywhere tends to, even if you have the cleanest house in the world, it tends to make your house look and feel unclean, okay? I, for me, clutter makes me, I can't think. Like, I just, I can't think. It's just like stuff, 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 and stuff, and stuff. So you want to have a very decluttered space. Now, that's not to say become a minimalist by any means, because I'm not. You love what you love. But sometimes lean more toward the less is more section, as opposed to a whole lot of stuff. And I want everybody to see everything I have. And then it looks like a cluttered mess. If you have a place to store some of your favorite pieces, rotate them out. Put up some of the stuff. Package it away. If you have somewhere to store it, put it up. When you get tired of the things that are out, swap them out instead of having everything out at one time. Okay? One of the main things that I always look for or that I create, even if I don't have it, is an entryway. I have to have a place where when my guests, my family walk into my home, it's like the very first thing that they see is like the welcome into my home area. Everybody doesn't have a foyer. Every apartment doesn't have a foyer. Every house doesn't have a foyer. But you could totally create one by just sectioning off an area as you walk into the door by making it like a little inviting entryway and there's so many things out there that are very inexpensive that you could use to create that look i'll try and insert something i've seen a person use before as well as like a little entryway to able to drop things on as they came in and it looked beautiful to me it's all in how you decorate so i'll try and find a picture of that and insert that as well to go along with what we're talking about and then i also show you what my current entryway looks like right now. I'll put it across the screen as well. So you always want to have, as soon as you open up the door, that welcome in, come on in, that inviting feel that most people look for when they come to visit you. Number, whatever number we're on, um, you want to make sure, especially if you're in a very small space, and you're trying to maximize that space and not have it feel so closed in and claustrophobic is you want to purchase things that sit up off the floor. 
things, even if it's just off the floor this much, that makes a world of difference when you're in a tiny space because it gives the eye the illusion that it's not a clunky piece sitting directly on the floor. It gives the illusion that it keeps going. Even if you can't really see under it, I'll insert a picture of what I'm talking about right here as well. Okay? Um, another thing that I've noticed in small space living and homes that I've been in that are way more smaller than mine, but when I tell you these people really put a lot of thought and time into making sure they maximized every corner, is using dual purpose decor. It could be beautiful. It doesn't have to be ugly. It could be beautiful. For example, in this apartment, I lost a linen closet that I had when I was in the three-bedroom units, okay? So instead of panicking about, oh my God, where am I going to put my towels? Where am I going to put my washcloths? Right behind me is a mirrored chest that I use for a nightstand. I've never really used it for anything on the inside. So because my bathroom is literally to the left of that, I use all my towels and my washcloths that I use for my personal self in this bathroom right here. I can grab them out and I can go and aesthetically it just looks like a nightstand. But it's dual purpose. Okay, um, in the hall bathroom, and I'll show you um, this bathroom, what it looks like. There is um, storage as far as drawers, cabinetry, stuff like that in there. Um, I do keep um, like toiletries, um, like my makeup underneath the cabinet, uh, anything first aid, you know, chlor um, about to say Clorox Curl. If you put some Clorox on your skin, honey, no. Peroxide, alcohol, band-aid, stuff like that, I keep in the bathroom, which I'll show you a picture of the bathroom as well. You want to make sure also when you, uh, if you have more than one bathroom, okay, that if, the, if it's the main bathroom, if you only have one or it's the guest bathroom, you want to make sure that it stays clutter-free. You want to have out just the essentials in that bathroom. Soap, lotion, hand towel, little bit of decor. You don't want it to be overcrowded in the bathroom, especially if it's a smaller bathroom like mine. So I'll insert a picture for you there as well. Actually, of both bathrooms. Um, so you want to make sure the countertops are clutter-free. And listen, never, ever, 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 ever put your toothbrushes on your countertops. Don't do it. Because what happens is, when you flush that toilet, those particles from whatever's in that toilet rises to the top, and then they trickle back down. You don't want your toothbrush sitting out on your countertop. So you want to have a place underneath, or a drawer, or nearby, even out of the room. Say, for example, put your caps on your toothbrushes. Put them away like I would do in here, but I have room in mind. So I've never kept a toothbrush holder or toothbrushes out on my counter. I don't care how much you scald them, wash them, just the thought of whatever I flush, particles go up and those particles come back down. Okay? So you want to keep your bathrooms light and airy. Okay? As far as your kitchen goes, it goes back to clutter. Do not have or try not to have, because I get some small space living warrant you to just make the best out of the best out of the best. I get that. But the less you have on your countertops, the cleaner the space will look and the more larger the space will look, even if it's a smaller space. Okay? Also remember, and I covered this in some past videos back at the other apartment. If I can find them, I will link them down below as well, where I kind of had like a two-part class on why I chose the things that I chose in my apartment. But one of the things um, was that in addition to lessening your clutter to give the illusion you have more space, is don't always think because you're in a smaller space that 
then this is a two-part thing with me because I'm all about scale, working with the size that you're given, and it kind of works both ways. So let me explain. Just because you're in a very small, much smaller unit or apartment house or whatever the case is than what I have here, okay, does not necessarily mean you have to go out and buy the tiniest of furniture because you're in a tiny space. Because what will happen when you do that, when you try and buy a whole bunch of little bitty things because, okay, I'm in this little bitty space, it starts to look, again, cluttered, crowded, unplanned, and too much. Okay? So if you're in a tiny space, again, sticking with, work with the space you're given at the same time, use one, maybe even two statement pieces that you wouldn't even think should go in a room of that size. And what it does is it gives you the illusion that, oh wow, this room isn't really that small because you're focusing on two large pieces, be it a longer couch that will fit the area. Okay, let's just say, for example, you have a nice long wall. Okay, and in your mind, that might be the biggest wall in, say, your living room. It's okay. To not go and try and find a couch that will fit like in the middle and then you have space over here, space over there. It's okay if you found a very large, comfortable couch that will fit that wall to a T. And then up above that wall, add two grand or one grand art piece or two large pieces of art to accommodate the width or shy a little bit of the width of that large couch in that small space. Then what you do is you come in and you balance it out with small, like a smaller coffee table that maybe may not be as big but functional. Okay, so you're giving people the illusion that yeah, this is a small spot or place, but when you look at this large size couch and these beautiful pieces of art or whatever it is you choose, it takes your mind completely away from the fact that, oh wow, this is a small apartment too. Oh wow, this is grand. This is nice. So let me insert for you how I utilize wall space here in my, in my home. I go big or go home. I'm a stickler for going in someone's home and them having a super large wall and they don't know what to do with it. And then they put a tiny little picture in the center of that big old wall. You're talking about driving somebody crazy. That would drive me insane. And you don't have to ever, don't think I'm telling you this because I want you to run out and spend a ton of money and get, no. Listen, I've watched many young ladies here on YouTube go and thrift. I've watched a woman thrift her entire house. I wish I could find that link to her video. Her entire house is thrifted where she revamped DIYs some stuff. I've told you guys, spray paint is your best freaking friend. You can change the look of anything with spray paint. This lady legit thrifted her whole entire house. And had she not said that, you couldn't have told me that she didn't go to Home Goods, Raw, TJ Maxx, Tuesday morning, and buy those items. So I'm not telling you, run out, spend all your monies, and get this and get that. No, you could totally thrift, even if you don't have a DIY bone in your body. Okay? You can still take a little paintbrush. That, that don't take nothing. Take a paintbrush, a can of spray paint, and just spray. Change the color of something. Lamps even. They have those shaped lamps, if you can see that behind me, in Goodwill thrift stores all the time, in that shape right there. Totally bring it home, DIY it, save up if you have to, buy you a nice lamp shape, put on top, call it a day. Another thing that could actually help you in small space living or just reflect light if you're in a darker, say if you're in a darker type of house or apartment or whatever, you don't get a lot, a lot of natural, natural sunlight, 
mirror. Anybody that has been on this channel with me for, you ain't got to be on here for the long time. In the last four or five months, I've said it and I'll say it again. I am a mirror girl at heart. I would prefer mirrors and anything reflective on my walls than I do art. I'm just not an artsy type of girl. I never have been. I probably never will be. I'm just a mirror girl. And I'll try and insert some photos right now of what I mean by reflective things and just having mirrors in my home. Um, they reflect light. They, are t they tend to make things look larger and make the eye continue to go and go and go when you use mirrors. Things that are see-through, not necessarily mirror, but items that are see-through. For example, I'll insert a photo of something that's see-through. I can display decor on it um, while looking at the piece. And while it is a large piece and it does touch the floor, it doesn't come up off the floor, the area that I have it in suits that particular piece. So, But you can see through it and it's not mirrored. So I'll insert that picture for you guys so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about without not seeing because I'm visual and I'm sure you are as well. Um, again, working with the space that you're given. This room that I'm in right now, which is my master, happens to be a super, super large room. So it, it's accommodating a king-size bed. Now, I know you, you, you have to buy what your money can afford. Again, I'm all about budgeting and not having you run out thinking you got to spend all this money on stuff. Because, again, it's just stuff. But it's stuff that makes us happy at the same time. So this room is the master. <clears throat> it accommodates large pieces of furniture. So here I have... King size bed, you probably can't see those mirrors unless you watch the tour, but those mirrors are super, super big on both sides. The nightstands, I've had them in several videos that were in another room at one point, but they're a nice, substantial size, and it fits the room like literally perfect. From wall to wall, it fits perfectly, okay? They're mirrored fronts, again, they reflect light because I have a window right behind you guys and then a window over here to my left. And so when light comes in, I have a mirror right here that is angled toward my bed. I said this to you guys before, if you have a, a floor length mirror or a taller mirror, if you're able to, diagonalize it in the corner that faces your bed so that when you wake up, that's the first thing you see. Thus, giving the eye the illusion that your room is way bigger than what it is because you're looking at the reflection, but it seems like it's just going and going and going. So I'm a mirror girl, mirrors on the wall, mirrors in within furniture pieces. I'll try to insert those pictures as I go, like I said. Um, what else can I share with you guys? Those were really like the main things. Also, because I did touch on this and I did a refresh at my daughter's house a while back. A lot of you guys always ask me this too. Sharon, I have dark furniture. I want to lighten it up. I can't go out and buy new furniture, yada, yada, yada. Same thing I did with my daughter. She had a dark chocolate colored leather sectional. Okay? And that was the very first thing you could see when you walked into her apartment. All I've done, very simple, very inexpensive, was to purchase a area rug that was lighter in color that brought out her accent colors, which were blue, a lighter color rug that was easy to clean because she does have small children, my grandkids, easy to clean, was not that expensive, it came from home, uh, Ross, I believe, and then I added light colored pillows on that dark sectional. I also gifted her two light gray chairs that used to be in my sunroom at the last apartment, which again lightened up the space. The light colored rug, the light colored pillows, it canceled out. You can still see the dark sectional, but it canceled your focus off of how dark the sectional was to everything around it that was lighter. I had her we DIY a lot of her dark colored 
like uh, decor pieces, we lighten them up by turning them either white or gray with just regular acrylic paint. Simple as that. We spray painted a lot of dark pieces that she had as wall decor that she had forever that I had gave her. We spray painted those and brought those back to life by lightening up the color of them because everything was just dark. So just by those spray paint, a 99 cent, $2, 3 at the most, give or take. We lightened up everything in her apartment that was dark to her by keeping the darkness because she's married. So she has to have that balance of not too girly, enough to meet husband halfway, and it was a match. It was a literally a match made in heaven with the small changes that we done. So if you're one of those people as well that reach out to me all the time about I have this dark furniture. I too have a dark fur. I have a dark section, which you will see in the video on the photo. Um, but again, I use lighter color pillows to bring it, um, make it a look not as heavy and dark. Plus also, again, working with the space that you're given, that um, it, it just lifted it up. It, that white carpet underneath canceled out, the pillows on top canceled out, and it just kind of all meshed together within um, that living room space. When working with an open space or an open floor plan, like in an apartment or even a house or whatever the case may be, it's all about creating zones without, like, just dividing the zone, but creating zones that are, you can tell they're zones, and they're, each just has their own spot. Here's a living room. Here's a dining area where we eat at. Here's, you want to create that look with the same flow. You don't want it, you, when your eye look at the open floor plan and it flows around all the different zones, you don't want the zones to be so harsh and so broke up that, it looks like you've created rooms within rooms within rooms. It's an open floor plan. So you want things to just flow naturally throughout that space. Even with those zones, you want things to um, cross match. So whatever you kind of have on this side, you want to sprinkle a little bit of that on the opposite side or to the left of that or to the right of that to show that all of this goes together, but it's not one big section, if that makes sense, which I'll show you here um, in the uh, pictures that I insert on the screen. That being said, I hope that was helpful. I hope I didn't leave anything out. If you guys have any questions or if I missed anything, please make sure to leave the comment down below. I have no problem recreating another video, being a little bit more specific about certain things. Um, if you're curious about it, so just let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully, again, this video was helpful to someone somewhere out there. If it wasn't, make sure you share it. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, like the channel, leave me a comment down below. I love you guys. To the morning back, hopefully this little semi-decor session was helpful to you guys and answered a lot of your questions that I get in the email. So rather than answering everybody individually, I thought I'd just make a collective video hoping to answer everyone's question. So you girls and guys, brothers and sisters, I will catch you guys in the next video. I love you guys. To the morning back. Everyone stay blessed, stay positive, stay prayed up, and don't let anyone dictate your mood. And your girl will catch you in the next video.